Okay. All right, so today we're going to talk about lead placement for 12 lead ECGs. Lead placement uh, really can make or break an electrocardiogram, and this is the most common problem with electrocardiograms. Um, there are a number of kinds of lead placement errors that can give a wrong diagnosis for a patient. The most common is reversed limb leads. And uh, we'll see perhaps one misplaced lead problem out of every 20 electrocardiograms. Now this one is very easy to do. It's because you're facing the patient and you're not thinking carefully and you have a lead that goes on the left arm and you're thinking your left arm and so you just get it in the wrong place. So it's really easy to do and that's okay so long as you always look at the electrocardiogram when it's completed and make sure that it doesn't have this error on it. Now, this is a normal lead one or two. Always look at leads one and two when you get done and make sure that the QRS is upright and that the P is upright. Now, here's the thing. There are some people whose QRS is reversed for whatever reason. Maybe they have a strong right axis deviation, or maybe they've had um, an infarct in the lateral wall, and it actually does look like this. How can you tell whether you've reversed the limb leads or whether they just have a true abnormality? Well, look at the P wave. If the P wave is upright and the QRS is down, then you've done it right patient just has an abnormal electrocardiogram. But if everything is upside down in lead one and two, you reverse your limb leads. Take a close look at them and do it over again and throw away your first electrocardiogram and don't let anybody see it. <laughs> now, the second uh, misplaced lead problem with electrocardiograms is misplaced precordial leads. Now this is not one that you can tell by looking at the electrocardiogram unless you have a lot of experience with uh, electrocardiograms. And we have to trust that the technician or nurse who took the 12 lead electrocardiogram got this right when we interpreted it. Now here's the problem. When you put the chest leads across the chest here, if you have them too low, it'll make it look like the patient has had a heart attack, an anterior wall infarct. We've got lots of patients get rejected for surgeries by the anesthesiologist because the electrocardiogram shows an anterior wall infarct that they've never had evaluated and that they didn't know anything about. And they get cured simply by having them have another electrocardiogram with the leads in the proper position. Now. The main reasons that people put the leads too low are the following. Number one, they haven't been checking their landmarks. They just kind of eyeball it and think, well, just somewhere in there is about right. You can't do that. You have to check the landmarks in every person. What are the landmarks? Well, the sternum is comprised of three sections. The xiphoid at the bottom, you have a larger piece in the middle, a smaller piece at the top here. Well, between this smaller piece and the big piece in the middle, there's a ridge, okay? I've never found somebody that you can't feel it in. It's real easy to feel if you just run your fingers across it. And at the outside edge of that ridge is the second intercostal space, okay? In other words, the second space between the ribs. So you count, that's the second one, then you count to the third one, and then the fourth one. Right next to the sternum, in the fourth intercostal space is V1 and V2. So that's crucial. Now some people want to put them out here and out here. They've got to be right next to the sternum. Now, the next lead you put on is lead V4. Skip lead th V3 for the minute. And you put V4 right in the mid-clavicular line. That's a line from the middle of the clavicle heading straight down the left leg. And it pretty much lines up with the nipple, but obviously it depends whether it's a man or a woman. Now, 
that should be in the fifth intercostal space. And if you look at a skeleton, you can see that the fourth intercostal space runs like so, fifth under the intercostal space runs like so. So it's going to be a little lower, but not much lower. A lot of people want to come clear down here with their leads, and that's going to give us a false reading. So V1, V2, and V4. Now, where does V3 go? Everybody wants to put it down here, but that's not where it goes. It goes right on a line smack dab between V2 and V4. So V1, V2, V3, V4. Now V6 then goes in the mid-axillary line, which is basically in line with the apex of the armpit, okay, right in the middle of the chest. And V5 goes between V4 and V6. V4, 5, and 6 are they don't matter so much and it doesn't ruin things if you don't get them exactly in the fifth intercostal space. But V1 through V4 are crucial and those are the ones that you need to make sure you get in the right position. Now, the second reason that the precordial leads get misplaced is in women with pendulous breasts. Okay, it's like, what do you do? We got a great big breast hanging down here. You know, I try and get it up under there or what? Listen, the breast doesn't have any effect on the electrocardiogram to speak of. So just pretend it's not there, go right over the top of the breast, okay? Now, I mean, if it's a relatively small breast and you can follow right underneath it, and that's fine. But the thing is to pay attention to where those intercostal spaces are. If somebody's obese and you can't find the intercostal spaces, well, do the best you can, okay? We're not asking you to do the impossible but be aware of these uh, changes. Now, there's one other thing I want to say, and that is when, the, uh, when you put the limb leads on, it doesn't really matter where you put them. You know, I just told you it's crucial where the precordial leads go. That's not the case with uh, the limb leads. You can put a, a right arm lead here or here or here or down here at the wrist. It doesn't matter. And in fact, if somebody has a tremor, you'll do better to isolate the tremor that's in their hands by putting it at the trunk, okay, where the extremity involved is attached. Same thing for the legs. All right, make sure that you've got your limb leads in the proper direction. Make sure the P wave is up, okay? Usually the R wave is also gonna be up in one, but just make sure the P wave is up. Make sure that you uh, avoid the extremities if they've got a tremor and check your landmarks to make sure that V1 and V2 are at the fourth intercostal space and that you don't drop down too far as you take the, put the other leads in place. And V3 has to be on a line between V2 and V4. You'll get it every time now. Thank you.